Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and this video is a little bit different. I'm on tour, I'm down here in London. I'm actually at Greenwich. I'm at the home of the Royal Observatory right here. Yeah, the Royal Observatory right here in Greenwich in London, yeah. Yeah, so there's the entrance there to the Royal Observatory. How about this? Folks, and look at all these people. What a nice day we've got today as well. And just wait until you see. We're high up, of course. We're on, the, we're on a hill here. They build a lot of observatories on hills for a good reason. It gets them away from all the smog and maybe any of the lights. But then this was built in 1675. Yeah, all the way back in 1675. Flamsteed House, it was called. Yeah, and it was partly designed by Sir Christopher Wren. Yeah, who designed St Paul's Cathedral. And the first Astronomer Royal was John Flamsteed. It's named after John Flamsteed, yes. And just look at this view here. We're looking down now on the Naval College down there. Just look at that view. That is absolutely amazing. Canary Wharf in the background. Just look at that. And there's obviously a connection with the Navy, an astronomical connection, because they obviously used the stars to navigate the seas in the olden days. And the, the observatory was very, very important for that. OK, now, this is just a quick look around the observatory and just to tell you about the history of it. I can't go in because I don't really have time to go in. So hopefully on another video, I'll get a chance to go in. But uh, on this time, we'll just take a look around, shall we? Oh, my goodness, the views from here are absolutely incredible. Even if you're not an astronomer, you're not interested in the stars, you have to come to the Royal Observatory up here just to see this view. You can see all of London up here. Just look at that view, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I think I could stand here all day looking at this. Look, you can even see the O2 Arena over there. So anyway, what I thought I'd do is we'll take a little look round and I'll tell you a little bit about the observatory. They've got the Meridian Line just over there. That's where the division between East and West is, the, uh, the Prime Meridian, yeah. The Greenwich Meridian. Go and take a look at that, shall we? I'll tell you what, that is a well-trodden path, isn't it? Yeah, but just look at all these people. That guy up there on that statue, Wolf, James Wolf. Look at look at that. It's a bit like Darth Vader, isn't he? Wowzers, that's very imposing that statue. Anyway, this is the actual observatory here, and uh, there's one of the domes. That's like an onion shape, I believe. That um, they put a bigger telescope in there than the original one, and they had to put a new kind of dome on it that was kind of onion shaped there. And here's the main entrance here. But anyway, we'll go and check out the Meridian Line over there and Flamsteed House is just over there. We'll check that out as well. OK, folks, so we're now looking at the Meridian Line. This is the division between East and West, the Prime Meridian Line. I'm actually on the eastern side here. Ooh, I'm on the east, yeah. Ooh. I'm on Putin's side, folks. And that building in the background is Flamsteed House. That's the original building. Built on the site of the old Greenwich Castle. It was Christopher Wren's idea to do that, to build it up here. It was Charles I that commissioned it because we needed a observatory to assist the Navy in the navigation around the world. And here's another interesting thing. You see that ball on the top there? That ball was to aid the ships. So what they do is, Every day at five to one, the ball is hoisted halfway up and then at two minutes to one, it's hoisted all the way to the top and at one o'clock, it drops. And when that ball drops, the captains of the ships could then calibrate their chronometers on the ships that allowed them to, you know, to set all the time. So they're all, they're all in time. And really, the British Navy ruled the world and this is why, can you see? We were so good at, at getting all the timings right. There you go. Yeah, so the meridian line is arbitrary. It's not like the equator. The prime meridian could have been anywhere. It could have been in Berlin. It could have been in Paris. Could have been in Moscow, even. <laughs> but they actually decided to have Greenwich as the prime meridian, probably because in around, we're talking around about 1850s, something like that. But our Navy was the most powerful and we had such influence at that time that the prime meridian of the world was chosen to be right here in Greenwich. And 
because they could pick this spot here, they knew that this was zero longitude and that was very, very important for the Navy and, and everywhere else in the world as well, all the other navies of the world to navigate around the world. So you what, it's kicking up a bit here with these dogs. Anyway, Plamsley will have studied the heavens from there and that will have aided the, the Navy to, uh, in the navigation, you know, getting the, solving the longitude problem. That's what they were doing, yeah? And they did that from that building there that we were just looking at there. And then I think, I believe these buildings came later and you can see there's a dome up there. That will have come later. And I talked about this dome up here, the Onion Dome. Those came at a later day. OK, now, Flamsteed was succeeded by Edmund Halley. Or was it Hawley? Yeah. Halley's Comet? Or was it Hawley's Comet? He was the second Astronomer Royal. OK, here we go. We're now inside. OK, here we are. We're inside now. We're inside the grounds. Looking towards the Onion Dome there. And uh, just thought I'd show you around. Let's have a little look around, shall we? Check out this telescope here. This is part of William Herschel's massive 40-foot, 12-metre reflecting telescope. Look at this here. All the information's here if you want to pause the screen now. I'll tell you what, they don't build them like they used to, do they? Look at that. Well, this is, that's history, folks. Yeah, how about that, folks? Absolutely amazing. Anyway, I can't go any further up there unless you pay, so I'm not paying today, so let's have a look this way, shall we? Check this out, Flamsteed's Well Telescope. This was the telescope that was constructed underneath the house, and it was straight down. Look at that there, a well. The telescope right down there, about 100 foot down, and that was the focal length of the telescope, and it was made to look straight up, but... Unfortunately, damp conditions down there meant they couldn't use it after a few years, but that was pretty inventive, wasn't it? How about that, eh? OK, let's have a look down here, shall we? They've also got the planetarium over there. That's the planetarium. This is quite a fancy building. It's called Alt Azimuth Pavilion, and there's a dome up there. It, was, it had a telescope for looking at the sun, and it used an Alt Azimuth type of mount and that's why it's called that. Ah, I think this is a camera obscura, is it? Or information here about the telescopes that they used. Yeah. Look at this building here. Isn't this grand? Wow. And it's got the names of uh, some of the people behind it as well, behind the observatory. It's got Wren there, look, can you see? Wren. This is the oldest object you will ever touch. Check this out, a massive meteorite here, look at that. Wowzers. Part of the Gibeon meteorite, prehistoric, look at that there. You can pause the video there if you want to read that. Got another little place here that we can have a look at, the micro gallery. A lot of pictures in here. I actually think this is where they have the astronomy photographer of the year. You know, the pictures for the astronomy photographer of the year is held in this section here. Look at these pictures here, the last one, the pictures. Look at that there, curiosity. Wowzers, look at that. Pictures of Mars. Here's a little look at the entrance of the planetarium. It's really busy. Look at all these people here. It's very, very popular. I've not been to a planetarium show for ages, so I think I'll have to go to one sometime. And hopefully next time I come here, I'll go to this one. I'll have more time to go. OK, so I'm now outside and I'm in Gagarin Terrace here at the Royal Observatory. This is Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space. And this was a quick look, just a quick look around the Royal Observatory here in Greenwich. I didn't pay to go in I didn't really have time to look inside unfortunately but hopefully if I come down next time I'll be able to show you inside the museum itself anyway hope you like this video if you do hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos and I will see you again on the next one